In this video, we'll start to discuss about connector selection criteria. Here we have a few pictures with a few automotive connectors. They have different shape, different colors, different type of uh, constructions. But generally, an automotive connector has th those components. So it has a housing, which is basically the plastic structure. Then it has pins that uh, those pins, they get crimped on wires and they then they get inserted in uh, those connectors with a special tool. They might have back shells. So they might have a protection shell on the back side of the connector. But many times that's not used in uh, automotive. And the reason for uh, why that it's not uh, used is because connectors also have seals. So it's easier to add seals on uh, each pin or on each wire than to make a shell or a back shell that is going to protect the whole connector from uh, water ingress. And some connectors might also have shielding, so they will have like a metal housing on top that is going to protect the connector from uh, electromagnetic interference or any kind of interference. And this is a scheme with uh, the connector components uh, and how are they organized. So from this on, we start to go a little uh, into this. So there are male and female connectors. Those are the general names that you're going to hear in uh, automotive. And the connector gender is dictated by the pins, so it's not dictated by the shape of the housing. Because the shape of the housing can be a plug or it can be a socket. So a plug, it's something that will get inserted into the socket. And the plug is going to be the one that uh, is going to have the female pins inside the housing. And the socket is going to be the one that is going to have the... Here we have some more sealed connectors, you can see uh, bigger sizes. And again around here, you, and again around here, you can see connector with two pins, with connectors with multiple pins. And uh, later in the 3D models, we will see more about uh, how the housings looks. And along the way, we are going to see other things about uh, the construction of the connectors. But it doesn't really matter that much because it's the criteria that uh, you need to know when selecting connectors. It's not uh, the connector architecture. And you need to make sure that you that is being acquired from a supplier, from a certified supplier. And this is uh, the connector selection criteria. So when you select a connector, first of all, you need to select the housing and the pins, the pins that are needed for that housing. So the first step on what to consider when choosing connectors is the numbers of pins needed. So how many pins do you need for that harness? Because at the end of the day, this is what you have to do. So you don't have just to put connectors in a vehicle. You have some circuits that need to be delivered from one place to another. And those circuits, they come from a different department. So you need to check those pins. How many circuits do you have? How many wires? Can you reduce that wires? Make the fewer, fewer of them? If not, this is it. If you need uh, 10 wires, then you need 10 pins, you need uh, at least a connector that has 10 pins. But of course, you are not going to do that. You are going to choose a connector with more pins because you never know if later in a week or a month you are going to receive an update that uh, one more wire has been added. So if you need 10 pins, you're probably going to choose a connector that has even 14 pins, 13, 12. Depends where the connector is. Depends how confident you are that uh, there is not much that you can add around there. So that's a thing of uh, experience also and also discussing with uh, other people. But it's very important that you add 20% of extra pins. So those are some of the challenges that you would see uh, inside the vehicle. And uh, this is how you can choose connectors based on them. So we look at this before in a previous video, but it's was all about the harness. This time it's only about connectors. So when you have high temperature, you need connectors rated for high temperature, for that temperature more specifically. You need to find out what's the temperature and check if the connectors are rated. And if you don't find connectors that are rated for that temperature, you might be able to use high temperature shields. But of course, this needs to be decided with uh, some other people inside the teams. If you have water ingress, you need to use sealed connectors so this is so this is the standard if you have stone and debris ingress so this is water ingress on steroids because it's uh, in the underbody where uh, you not only have water coming from the road but you have stones 
and mud and debris that can be sprayed onto your electrical components. In this case, 100% you need sealed connectors, but you also need, and those are so places inside the vehicle that uh, cause problems. So the engine compartment, everywhere you have problems in there. So you have water ingress or jet from above if you wash your engine. You have debris and mud splash spray from uh, below or uh, even from above, who knows. Then locally you might have high temperature from exhaust pipes and engine parts. So this is uh, around the engine. You might have possible chemicals and fluids. The older the vehicle gets, probably 100% that is going to happen. You have continuous vibrations from the engine. And you have EMI interference from alternator and other coils. On the underbody, again, everywhere you have water ingress, jet, debris, and mud splash and spray. Locally, you have high temperatures from exhaust pipes everywhere from... So those are the main things that uh, you need to look at when uh, selecting connectors for uh, automotive harnesses. You should always remember the relationship between connectors, wires, pins and the current and voltage that you have in the circuits because this is the only thing that uh, drives the selection. Everything else is uh, external. And we are going to continue to look at this relationship in the next videos when we talk about wires and other components. So see you in the next video.